Well, there's been a lot of discussion about the term salt index and what it means with regard to crop safety for fertilizers. When liquid fertilizers were first becoming prominent in the marketplace, one of the concerns was the crop safety that each product provided and how that related to where a product could or couldn't be placed. The term salt index was used to describe the relative safety of fertilizer products, both liquid and dry. However, there has been a lot of confusion over the years about how it is measured, what it measures, and what are the implications of a low medium, or high salt index. This presentation is intended to describe a salt and how it relates to fertilizer, and there's a discussion of what salt index is, how it is used, and in many cases how it is misused. There's also a recommendation on putting salt index into a more appropriate context of the crop safety agroliquid products offer. So in order to understand salt index, it is important to understand what is meant by the term salt. As we see on the left side of the slide, a salt is any chemical compound that is composed of a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion. When most of us hear the word salt, we tend to think of sodium chloride or table salt. Sodium chloride is, by definition, a salt, but it is not a common component of fertilizers. The question is often asked about how much salt do our fertilizers have? Well, in strict chemical terms, fertilizers are salts. One of the most recognizable forms on this chart is KCl, or potassium chloride. That compound is 0060 potash. The compound in the middle is monoammonium phosphate, or 11520. The third compound is ammonium nitrate a common nitrogen fertilizer. As you can see, they all have a positively charged ion and a negatively charged ion, which meets the definition of a salt. Now that we have a definition of salt and how fertilizers fit into that definition, we can now look at what we mean by salt index. The original intent of the salt index was to measure and compare the changes in soil solution osmotic pressure when fertilizer was applied to the soil. The standard for comparison was sodium nitrate, and that value was set at 100. Fertilizers that caused less of a change in osmotic pressure had a lower salt index, and those that caused more of a change had a higher salt index. This methodology was developed in the 1940s and was difficult to do. Newer methodology uses a measure of electrical conductance in the fertilizer solution, not the soil solution, to determine the salt index. This method usually results in higher actual values than the original methods and should not be directly compared to those original methods. So why was the concept of salt index developed? The original intent was to develop a scale, or index, of the potential for a fertilizer to cause crop injury. Over the years, the term salt index has been used for a variety of different things, some that make sense, and some that were, perhaps, not technically accurate. Salt index comparisons don't necessarily account for the nutrient of interest. For example, there is many nitrogen products on the market that have relatively low salt indexes, including an agroliquid product, but it is still not a good sound agronomic practice to put a lot of nitrogen in furrow with a sensitive seed. The overall use of the term by fertilizer industry has been to demonstrate the relative crop safety of one product compared to another. That may have been a reasonable conversation at one time, but with the new fertilizer technology that is available today, there is less of a correlation between salt index and crop safety. So plant injury from fertilizer is not completely understood. It is known, however, that some fertilizers cause the water in a plant cells to move out of those cells, causing desiccation and death. That is described in the cell on the left side of the diagram. A fertilizer component that can cause this is chlorine. As you recall, chlorine is one of the compounds or components of muriate of potash, or 0060. Healthy cells have a positive influx of water that keeps them turgid and physiologically functioning. 
This is a list of fertilizer products with their respective salt index values. The products listed in green are agroliquid products. As you can see, the salt index values of the fertilizer products run a range from 5 to 156. The agroliquid products listed have a salt index of less than 40, where most of the nitrogen and sulfur products on this list are much higher value than that. Some of the literature on this topic suggests that if the salt index of a product is at or below 20, it is relatively safe to apply in furrow next to the seed. As you look at this list, there are many products that are routinely used in furrow, but nitrogen products like in response are generally not recommended in furrow application, even though their salt index is below 20. Ammonium polyphosphate, or 1034O, can be applied in furrow, but there are use rate restrictions based on soil texture and cation exchange capacity. To add to the complexity of the salt index versus crop safety discussion, AgroLiquid has two newer products that are not included on this chart, Calibrate and Enhance. Both products have a salt index value of greater than 20, but both can be safely applied in furrow to a number of crops. So as you can see, the new fertilizer technology available today causes the correlation between salt index and potential for crop injury to diminish. So we have seen what salt index was originally intended to do and also see the correlation between salt index and crop safety as it used to be and how it's not so much of a correlation now. With that in mind, what are the important things to focus on? First and foremost, crop safety and performance of agroliquid products should be the focus of any discussion. Agroliquid product crop safety and performance claims are backed up by over 20 years of research and field experiences and don't need to be justified by laboratory value. When selecting fertilizer products and application placement, it is important to use the best agronomic practices for the product, crop, and row spacing. Corn and soybeans, for example, have different limitations on what rates of certain agroliquid products can be applied in furrow or as a foliar spray. Some of the vegetable crops, on the other hand, should not have any in furrow applications of agroliquid products at planting. Here are some of those agronomic considerations we talked about in the previous slide. In addition to the product itself, there are several cultural practices and environmental conditions that need to be taken into account when determining crop safety risks. Soil environmental conditions play a large role in crop response to fertilizer products, with cooler, drier soil conditions having a higher potential for adverse crop response compared to a warmer, moist soil. Foliar applications have a lot of additional issues to be aware of with regard to fertilizer recommendations. Crop growth stage is a very important factor in the safety and performance of foliar applications. Tank mix partners and surfactants may also play a role in safety and performance. When tank mixing with crop protection products, it is important to read and follow label directions of the pesticides. Pay special attention to tank mix restrictions and compatibility testing instructions on the pesticide label. This and the next slide are photos of grow-out boxes comparing agroliquid products to several conventional potassium and phosphorus products. The yellow arrow points to the application point for each fertilizer, and applications are based on the position of the seed. In this photo, we see progerminator plus SureK compared to an equivalent rate of DAP and potassium chloride, or 0060. Notice how the roots avoid the application zone of the DAP plus 0060, but grow to and through the application zone of agroliquid products. Progerminator 9243 was compared to conventional liquid phosphate fertilizer 9189 applied next to the seed. As with the previous slide, the corn roots grow to and through the treated zone of the agroliquid product. Root growth is restricted and reduced in a treated zone of the competitive product. Other grow out boxes have been done with 1034 compared to Pro Germinator, and the results are very similar. So, in summary, 
Here are a few reminders about salt index and how it relates to agroliquid products. First, don't get caught up in the absolute numbers. Methodology, test conditions, and the products tested all influence the index value that is reported. Next, don't get caught up in salt index comparisons with competitive products. As we have seen, the correlation between salt index and crop safety is not as direct as it was at one time. The topic that should be discussed is the safety and flexibility of agroliquid fertilizer products and the research plus field experiences that have gone into making those claims. It is also important to select and apply fertilizers based on sound agronomic practices. Consider what crops, application methods, tank mix partners, and environmental conditions are present when making recommendations. For additional information on the selection and use of agroliquid fertilizer products, please contact your local agroliquid retail partner, agroliquid sales account manager, or field agronomy manager in your area. Agroliquid has produced a number of technical materials to help in the selection and use of fertilizer products, many of which can be found at our website, agroliquid.com. Agroliquid strongly recommends using soil analysis and tissue analysis to determine the optimal use rates of our fertilizer products.